Okay, guys, uh, welcome to the Eagle podcast. Tonight, we're joined by uh, a very special guest, uh, Mr. John Steele from Hard Mowers fame, the man behind probably is one of the toughest trail races in the United Kingdom. Um, John, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, John, and thank you for inviting me on as well. Uh, uh, no, no, no problem. Uh, John, the first time I ever encountered a Hard Mowers runner was two and a half years ago, and me and my partner were making our way from Saltburn to Whitby on a, a September afternoon, and all of a sudden, we kept on getting passed by people wearing race numbers saying Hard Mowers on, and I honestly thought, what? it's a bit busy along here, um, sort of uh, towards Runswick Bay sort of area, and we got talking to a few people, and to be honest with you, I, I couldn't believe what sort of distance they were doing. And we thought we were having a big day doing sort of 21 miles, Salt Burton and Whitby. But um, talk us through how you got started with Hard Mowers and, and what's the thought process behind it? Okay, Hard Mowers started in 2008. Um, basically, I'd started ultra running a few years before. And in the UK, they, well, in England, there wasn't that many... Um, ultra races, you know, 100 milers. Uh, right. There was maybe half a dozen. I'm, I may miss a few. There was, uh, there was West Island Way, Lakeland 100, just about started up then. Um, and there was Caesars Camp. And there was, there was a couple of more races, uh, which I forget anyway. But it was, it was not like what it is now. It's so many races. And um, I used to do quite a bit of running around the North York Moors. And yeah. there was the LDWA event, and there was Osmo Lewis Phoenix, which was a 50k race uh, event around there. But there was nothing any f bigger, you know. And I thought, well, it's about time, sort of North, uh, well, the North York Moors, North Yorkshire, or well, Yorkshire, had, had some extra races, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, I'd done parts of the Cleveland Way, and it was a stunning route, and I thought that'd be ideal. Uh, and the route itself was 110 miles. I was a good friend of Dario Melagini, who used to, used to be the race director for the West Island Way race. His race, it, the West Island Way is 95 miles. And uh, when I was chatting to him, I was saying, well, you know, it's, uh, it's 110. Should I, not, should I stop the race at Scarborough and it'd be 100 miles? He says, well, why make it just 100? Why not be the distance it is? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it kind of set up from there. The very first year um, we held it, there was about 15 runners. About nice. three of them were from uh, uh, Europe and about another two were from America. So we had a... Oh, a, wow. Quite, yeah, yeah. Quite, <laughs> quite a big field um, of... Not big field of runners, but, you know, yeah. big of different, different countries taking part. Um, yeah. And uh, it was... Uh, it was an amazing weekend. It really was. It was when I look back and all the things that we kind of did and how I kind of ran the, organized the race, it makes me shudder a little bit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the difference then was um, people entering the race had done numerous hundred miles before and uh, things are a little bit more different now where you get people who would have possibly in 2008 never ever considered running a hundred miles or that kind of distance whereas now they have these these people have friends or that, that they know that's taken part in races and they've been installed with confidence because they've known yeah. someone who's done it whereas in 2008 and earlier you know you didn't really know anyone i didn't know personally myself i didn't know any but maybe you know, one or two people that I had met in races that had run that distance yeah and uh, so it was, it was a couple of things. It was a bit of a showcase for, for the race. I thought before I even set it up, I, I mean, I went to see Malcolm Hodginson, who's a North York Moors, well, sort of the Cleveland Way in the Walls Way, yeah. uh, the park ranger. And he, um, I was thought, I'd just go, go and see him, have a chat with him. And he'd probably say, well, no, sorry, you can't. You know, I had a bit of a, <laughs> I'm not a negative. I'm not a, a, a pessimist. I'm kind of, uh, I kind of sometimes think, well, you know, let's look at the worst case scenario yeah. I'm with you. yeah i'm with you and then uh then it kind of built from there and each year it got, it got bigger and bigger and then you know like two years later we introduced the the, the 50 yeah the hard 50 well, hard 55 should i say and then 
uh, logically, you know, there's steps to start the hard mode 60, then to 30, and, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, then we open the marathon series. And then once, I think, to, I think 2013, opening the marathon series, then it got really busy and it took a lot yeah. of time up. So then I, you know, I, I kind of uh, needed to concentrate on it. Well, at that time, not full time, but like three quarters of the time with a, you know, bit of, bit of part time PT and as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. I, I was, I was going to ask you, um, how much of, how much does it take up your time now? Is it full on? Is it almost a full time job to keep? Yeah, it's full on. It really yeah. is. Um, and especially when it comes close to race, it's like, you know, day and night, you know, leading up to race. About the time now, it's a bit quieter, so it's catching up all the things that you you need to, you know, that you normally, um, I normally do each month, but coming up to race, I have to put shelf things aside, so it is. I do a little bit of PT, and I have about two or three clients, but that's more, they've approached me and asked me to PT them rather than I've looked for it, because I'm, yeah. you know, time is, I don't have much, much time. Uh, to do things and, and also Shirley, uh, my wife and, and partner with uh, Hard Moss, she yeah. works three days a week and then the rest of the time is spent usually on Hard Moss stuff. So it's, it's, um, I couldn't even list, it'd take me a long time to list all the little things. And, yeah, I can imagine. You know, as, as well as organizing the routes and whatever, it's also, um, you know, emails, uh, various things and, it's 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 not just it's also kind of um human relations as well yeah well. yeah, yeah you know yeah. what i mean it's, it's it's so it's so broad so yeah it's... I, I mean i i've looked through the website and sort of the the amount of detail that you go into is obviously that's you've built that up through time of people asking questions where you've thought right well i'm never answering that question again five thousand times so i'm just going to write write um, at this point, there will be the car park, and then there your crew teams can meet you. Blah blah blah. Because obviously, I, I can see that you've put your absolute heart and soul into it. Um, and I bet you've seen some pretty amazing things, have you? Like people's digging deep and stuff, like the human spirit and, and pushing beyond where we think we can, you know, where we can go and finding that extra couple of k's and a couple of miles to finish the task in hand. Definitely, definitely. And you know, sometimes because it's been over. <sighs> uh 11 years now and um you sometimes well it's like anything you sometimes you go with go on with your day-to-day -day life and you get a little bit yeah. um jaded i don't know if jaded is the right word yeah. but you kind of take things for granted and you just get on with what you're doing and you're thinking oh, i've got to do this i've got to do this which is hardly a hardship but because yeah. it's <laughs> the only thing that you start to whatever you do you start to think kind of like that and every now and again, and every now and again at a race, um, somebody will finish who's finished for the first time, you know, like uh, finished, uh, sorry, uh, maybe let's say the 50. Uh, mm -hmm. They may have tried it twice, three times before and never finished. And then they finish that time. Um, mm. Or you could, you get somebody who um, like, you know, I can think of a certain person. I won't mention him, but he's, you know, last few months he's been so rude about the race and he was going to pull out the race. He wasn't going yeah. to enter the race and he finished. Wow. And it was, and it was just, you know, like a, a, amazing, you know, there, there's so many people now that you, you that start the race, say like the, the 50, you know, you got like 500 odd people out on the course. So you lose where people, um, not where they are. I don't mean where they are, but yeah, you, yeah. Like, you know, you know, certain some people are running, but you can't yeah. keep an eye and think, right, they didn't finish last year, but they finished this year. Yeah, yeah. So it's more, it's more standalone things, which you notice more now. I'll you see people coming in and they burst into tears <laughs> and whatever. And it is, it can be emotional. Like quite often, it kind of, it doesn't go over my head, but I kind of like, I'm kind of used to it, but every now and again, it catch, <laughs> catches me out. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. A a mess. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine yeah. you are because you, you've created, what you've done is you've created a community, haven't you? Like the, the Hardmores family is proper community driven. I can see that from um, the, the Facebook pages when I'm on the moors myself, the amount of people who I see wearing the t-shirts. Um, yeah, you know, 
I think what you've done there is you've you've really put the North Yorkshire Mirrors uh, on the map massively, you know, um, and and you're to be commended for that. And I mean, how That's lucky it. how lucky are we to have the North Yorkshire Mirrors and the Cleveland Way because it's just stunning. Oh yes, absolutely beautiful. It's uh, uh, it's a fantastic area, and like like you say, there is a, a massive community, and a huge amount of that is obviously is social media based. You know, yeah. it really is, and they have their own little uh, groups within the groups i mean everybody's yeah. like it's not you know everybody's welcome to the, the smaller groups that go out and recce but they organize things and i yeah. think the huge the most important thing is like it's all inclusive so you know the the, the last runner to the first runner but as important is each other you know i yeah. mean it, you know it's it, it's there's no uh elitism and I try to make sure keep we try and police the Facebook groups, avoid any kind of negative. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes maybe I'm a little bit harsh with some of the things I delete, but it's purely because like life can be so uh, stressful and uh, you know day to day life. So I'm people go on there to escape that. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. So I try and make make it like a place where the negativity isn't there and the argument isn't there. You know, a bit of banter is great, et cetera. Yeah, but yeah. It's, uh, it, it, <laughs> is there any rivalries, John? Is there any sort of rivalries popped up over the years? Anyone, any sort of people who are always against each other? Or is it more sort of community-based? It's a lot more community-based. There's, there's, bant there's banter between one or two, you know, like yeah. <laughs> we were racist, but they're really, you know, I mean, at the same time that, the, the people I know sort of train together. Right, okay. I mean, even, you know, there's like, uh, he won't mind mentioning uh, mention his name, Anthony Gerundini has done a lot of races over the years and uh, he'll be competing for third, second or third, fourth or fifth or whatever. Yeah. Actually, he's moved into the 50, MV50 category now. So he'll, he'll um, try and win that. Yeah. So he'll try as much as he can but if he doesn't, he's the first person to put on Facebook or to go over and like congratulate the winner and say how oh, well. That's class. Yeah, that's really yeah, it's, good. It's really, it's really good to see, you know. So everybody's kind of behind each other. And, um, you know, we, I think that anybody had been any kind of rivalry, which it wasn't really friendly, I don't, I think it's got to the point now people wouldn't really dare because the community is too big and, you know, they would. Yeah, mm. I, I seen an amazing photo. Um, I think it was of the last race that you ran, uh, and the weather conditions were bad because I was on, I was doing salt blender with me, and it was absolutely lashing it down. And you were on the other side of the mowers, and there was a picture of a couple, a man and a woman holding hands. Um, yes. and I just yeah. thought that's that's amazing. That is, you know what I mean? That that what what a thing to experience as a couple. That, you know, to go through that hardship together. It, I think it definitely must bring people on. Um, has there been any hard mowers weddings or anything like that? I, I wonder. There's been a couple. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there was Sarah Booth and Andy Norman, or so I should say Sarah Norman and Andy yeah. Norman. <laughs> they, uh, well, they, uh, Andy and Sarah, they often run together. They run races together. And they ran the, uh, the hard mowers 160 God, I'm, I can't remember what year, several years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. And when they finished, uh, and finally Brig, and in front of everyone, Andy got down on his knee. Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to kick myself this because um, there's, there's some others, but I can't remember. That's, I, I uh, yeah, yeah no, that's fair enough. And there was our, of course, myself and Shirley, we, we got married uh, on the, um, on the Cle on, well, not officially married on the Cleveland Way. We got married in Selby, but we... We had our wedding uh, celebrations the next day and a, a mock wedding uh, up wow. at Lordstone. That's, yeah. That's, so, yeah. That's and amazing. on a Sunday, we invited everybody for like um, a fun race over the Three Sisters. Oh. So, yeah, so it's, you know, I mean, that was, I mean, we kind of met via the, well, slightly by the Hardmores and slightly by um, West Island Way. She, I, I knew her from the West Island Way and she came and ran the first Hardmores 110 and she was a oh. first lady. Brilliant. And so about maybe, I think about year, uh, well, 2010, later in 2010, we, we got together, which was like maybe a year or two after, you yeah. know, after that race. 
uh, there is there has been others, or there has been like uh, relationships that have got together. Yeah, yeah. That. Brilliant. Uh, my mind's gone blank. I'm no, sure. It's, I'm sure. It, no, it's all right. It, it's have a, have a think on it. Um, going back to the Cleveland way, I don't know if you remember this, but the National Trust did a, a poll, and I'm sure pretty much um, it got hijacked because because <laughs> yeah. the Cleveland yeah, yeah, way, yeah, 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 yeah. the Cleveland way, <laughs> <laughs> the Cleveland way uh, ran away with it, didn't it? And um, I remember seeing sort of some of the comments saying it looks like the entirety of the hard mirrors have voted for the Cleveland way, <laughs> and and it was. It, but I, I've done a lot of the other national trails, and like mm. hand on heart, yes. I just think that the Cleveland way is the best because it offers so yes. much different in terrain. Yes. Um, and and what's what's your fo- sort of favourite part of the Cleveland way? Have you got anywhere where you particularly enjoy or? It's well. I, that's a hard one because the majority of it, I love so many bits. You know, I could mm. say, I could say that I love the Cleveland Hills. You know, around um, Waynestones area, and then also you remember like Robiners Bay, which I yeah. love. But then I also remember going over towards um, Runswick and towards yeah. Salt. So many parts of the uh, the way, and what usually happens uh, in a similar way is like. When I'll be organising the 55, most of my time will be around that area. Yeah. And then towards the end of it, I'll be thinking, I miss the coast. I haven't been on the coast for ages. Yeah. So, like, you know, so then, then you go and then maybe there's a race or something that you're sorting out at that end. So you'll be at that end and then you'll be thinking, ah, oh, I'm missing so So it's... It, it's yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah. And, the, um, you know, it's all about happy memories. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... It's a great thing for me. Hayburn Wike's my favourite spot. I, I love. Oh, beautiful! Yes. It, it, uh, yeah, just... that stretch. Sorry, the stretch between uh, Raven Scar and the Cleveland Way to Hayburn Wike. It's stunning, and it's so can be so quiet at times. Yeah, I love that section. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good section. Um, for people who are want to transition from road into trail. And sort of maybe as you're a good accomplished half marathon or marathon runner, what? How does someone? How does someone? Where, where do you jump from half marathon into sort of? Oh, I'm going to do the fifty. Or I'm going to do the one ten. What? What sort of training do you need to sort of do? And what? 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 Any hints or tips for anyone? Well, um, there's a lot of different. A lot of people will give you a lot of different answers. Right. Okay. And how, you know how uh, I would suggest is that you continue, you need to uh, run on the kind of terrain. If you can, run on the terrain that you will be, you know, say yeah. you'll be, you know, say, the, the, say the hard most 50 or whatever. If you can, if you can't, you've just got to make the most of it, the best what you can do. Uh, to give you an idea, I used to live in uh, near Hornsey on, on the uh, East Coast. Oh, yeah. uh, we've got a trail around there, but not much. And there was not much in the way of hills. So I'd go on the treadmill and uh you know run on the incline or there yeah. was a seat fence wall i'd run on that or run on the sand so you've got to make the best of what you've got around you even yeah. if there's just there's nothing but just a small park getting in the park but you know the thing is um anything will transist over to a certain degree whatever type of fitness and i think it's whatever you can you can fit in um you know i mean i think when I started doing trail, moving up to trail stuff, I was probably doing about 30, 40 miles a week. And right. for some people, that's a lot. Some people, that's hardly anything. Yeah. I do quite a few more miles now. Um, but it's as long as they progress with the distance about sort of 10% each week and, and nothing more, not just jump and leap into things. Yeah, as yeah. Such. And it's all about time on your feet as well for something like the 55. So, you know, if you can get out and just spend, you know, no matter what speed you're going, and just get out for a length of time. And if you can hit the gym and do some core and, and strength work and conditioning work, that's great as well. That will help you for injuries. And, you know, uh, I know people, there's a bit of a thing now with um, when people talk about stretching, some people are against it, some people are for it. Uh, yeah. You know, it's whatever way you want to go with that, but I'd advise maybe just some stretching and whatever else from yeah. doing years of uh, years of running, you know, I mean, even though I've been stretching my flexibility is not, not great. Right. And, you know, yeah. it's just worth keeping that for, you know, years into it. No, um, that's, yeah. um, 
that's a that's a valid point. And um, something like hard move is obviously eventually your fitness will let you down, and it comes a it becomes a mental battle, doesn't it? Is there any sort of hints really? and tips about improving your mental robustness, sort of? Yeah, I mean, a huge part of it is it's just belief. It's just belief. It's just to start to believe in yourself, what you can, uh, what you can achieve, what you can, what you can do, and then you know, everybody, everybody looks at other people, and you know, you or to turn up at the start line, and nobody looks always looks fitter, everybody looks faster, everybody looks like they're in the top yeah. gear. You know? But that same person is thinking the same thing when they're looking around. Well, not yeah. everyone, but most, yeah. or if they're not. They should be because maybe there's a slight <laughs> bit of arrogance there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so definitely. That's, that's, yeah, exactly. You know, and the only thing is, I mean, the way I've developed more overall confidence in in the longer races is the more training I've done, the more bad runs I've had when I've trained. You know, when you go out and you go for a run and it's uh, completely yeah. crap and you feel mm-hmm. really rough and everything, and then you go back and you think, ooh. ooh but if you want to think, you continued on that run. You know, when you go out for a run, it's nice and easy. You know, yeah. that's not something that you can mentally store. So you've got to mentally store all these times you've gone out. You know, mm. go out in bad conditions. I don't mean like dangerous yeah. conditions. You know yeah. what I mean? Go out in bad conditions. Go out in the early, if you can in the early hours of the morning, go out in the early hours of the morning because all those things was kind of mentally toughen you up, you yeah. know, develop a amount of resilience. Uh, and then they're the things that you can look back on so that when you're suffering in a race and thinking of stopping, yeah, uh, then that's what you can drop back on. Another tip is quite often in ultras, you can be feeling really, really, really rough and really, really tired. And then like half an hour later, an hour later, you can be feeling as fantastic as anything, yeah. no matter what you know, distance into the race it is. And some, sometimes when you are feeling really bad, just wait for the fact that you're going to get a high later on. You're going to go into a high and just hang on there. Hang, in, hang on in there. I'll yeah. throw another tip for this as well while I'm remembering these yeah, things. Yeah, no, do it. Yeah. Do it. Um, I'll use an example. If you go out and say, I don't know, go out for a 10 mile run yeah. and like 10 miles is, feels a, a, a long way, you know, a long, you know, a long way to go out for a run. Um, and you set off and you get to three miles and you think, I can't do this. Uh, you know, I can't do this. Sometimes um, what I do with similar circumstances, I know other people do it as well. Yeah. They say to themselves, well, I'll tell you what, let's do a deal. Let's do seven miles. But you don't <laughs> do seven miles, right? You tell your head that you're doing seven miles. <laughs> and when you get to six miles, seven, or seven miles, or close six and a half or whatever it is, then you think, ah, it's only three miles. Three, yeah. you know, I've already done seven miles, three miles. And then break it down, trick your mind, confuse your mind, give it that like a reward. All right, we'll, we'll bargain with it and just fib to it and you can get it through. And it works. And I know that's other people do that too. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, would you say that comes from your, from your military background, from your days? Is that where that's come from? Or have you just, has that grown as you've got more into sort of trail running? I think that's more, actually, I believe that's more come from ultra distance. I think, yeah, I think that's more come from um, a few years ago. I did a a race called The Hill and it was, you know, it was a, it was a, it was 160 miler and mentally, yeah, my head was not in a good way. And then, um, then I decided, I thought, right let's just do a hundred miles. Let's do a hundred miles. That's okay. A hundred miles looks good. You know, in, in yeah. aspects of myself, yeah. I could live with that factor, but it was a part of me. So the part of my head, I was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll sneak through and do a bit further and do a bit further. And I think that was the first time that I realized that I, you know, I, you know, that I used that and then I've used it a few times since. And I even do it on like say training runs. Sometimes I think, Oh, you know what I mean? You set off, you think, what the hell? And so I say, ah, oh, we'll cut it short, you know, but I don't cut it short, you yeah. know, you know <laughs> as, as long as you do it, yeah, yeah. So uh, that really did actually come from uh, there. But I mean, like, you know, uh, the hill I was out for, uh, 48 hours on that, going up oh. and down the hill. So, it, you know, it was, uh, it was, 
you know, it's a really kind of, for me, it was a really long stuff which got in my head. I had to find ways to get through it, you know. Wow. And, oh, yeah, that was. Mm. Yeah, that's. What, um, what races have you done and what races would you like to do? Have you done the Bob Graham? I have, but not in 24 hours. Uh, Bob Graham was the original reason I started ah, uh, okay. training and trail running. Yeah, I was in um, the Lake District in 2003. And I saw this this board up for the 24 hour challenge, Lakeland 24 hour challenge. Yeah, and I was reading, I was looking through, and I thought, and I thought, yeah, three miles, <laughs> three miles an hour isn't that isn't that you know isn't that fast? Yeah, right, you know, <laughs> that fast. You know, I thought. Yeah, I could do something like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like completely, um, you know, uh, just like ridiculous. Um, and I overestimate. I didn't overestimate the challenge. I overestimated my abilities at right. the time. And yeah. uh, I had a go when I got to do male race, uh, which is about 28, 29, I don't know, something in there. I was in a mess. I had right. to drop out. And I went back in 2012. I had a couple of attempts, but I went back in 2012. And we got stuck in some bad mist on the uh, on the on the um, dods, right? Uh, wandering around for ages, and then by the time we got back down to Dun- Dunmel Rays, you know, we lost too much time. Yeah, the guy yeah, was, yeah. He, he decided to quit. I decided to continue on, and uh, I'm glad I did because my sport was there and everything. And yeah. I ended up doing like 27 and a half hours, and. It was one of the best, you know, one of one of them, you know, one of the, you know, one of the better, you know, running wise, one of the better days in my life because it was such a fantastic day. The pressure was off, and I've mm. been meaning to go back to the Bob Graham round, but it's a bit of a funny thing because it was the thing that initially got me into this. I got, I, I'm nervous that if I go out and do sub twenty four, then that will be closure to the whole thing. So right, I'll keep like okay. putting off, yeah. So <laughs> no, fair enough. Where do you think the explosion in trail running's come from? Because I, I see more and more people now, and 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 I'll use Netflix as an example. Uh, the Barkley Marathon, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, there's a thing on there about Fiona Rocks. You know, there's more and more people sort of really sort of looking at this ultra stuff now and saying, oh, like the daring to dream, aren't they? The daring to dream sort of, well, could I do 100 miles? You know, and um, it just seems to be the last few sort of years, it's just gone through the roof. Like, it, it is a proper superhuman thing to be able to do to run that sort of distance. It's a proper test, isn't it? Super test. I think it's, um, I get a feeling that around about the time of uh this is for the UK, you know, for the, you know, around about the time of the Olympics, uh, there was more focus switch on sport. And around about that time as well, you got all the uh, cycling, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Tour de France, you know, the, um, I forgot his bloody name, winning the Tour de France, you know, and, and like, just British sports. Yeah. I mean, much stronger, you know, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. winning things, like we never used to, you know, kind of, win things and then starting to win 